And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. And today we're going to talk about Bitcoin price action. We'll take a look at the NASDAQ. We'll take a look at some of the altcoins and answer the big question. Is it too late? If you already missed this Bitcoin rally, is it too late to get involved in crypto? We'll go over some of the ideas there. So starting it out here with uh, Bitcoin on the daily time frame. We did close a massive, uh, I want to say green, green candle, but it is blue because of the PVRSA indicator, which is going to note that there was higher volume on this candle than the previous, I believe it's five. Yeah, it'd be previous five candles. That's why it changed color. Needless to say, when there is more volume, Coming alongside a higher low on the daily time frame, that does give us the bias for one more push. Now, where would the invalidation be? Any kind of a daily closure? I'd say back below 35.4 if you're aggressive and 34.5 if you're conservative. Then I'd be looking for a quick move down to about 33,000. So I would say a uh, key level to hold on Bitcoin on the daily is going to be 35,444. Um, as long as we're above there, I would say the chances are that we do get one more push to the upside. Even though daily momentum will uh, will cross uh, and will remain down as long as we're below 37,3. So needs to get back above 37,300 preferably on a 4 hour time frame and volatility is kind of beginning to decline as we are bouncing off the green 55 um let's see do we have a cone shaped kind of trend line to put in here as we know bitcoin and ethereum like to operate in some of these kind of cone shapes. I, I don't know if I'd call it a bull flag or a cone or or what I would call it exactly. But uh, so let's just scratch that idea and uh, say, you know, probably going to run into some selling pressure in the top side here. Today is Thursday. It is a typical down day for, uh, for Bitcoin. I think one of the most down days in in Bitcoin's history, so to speak, when you speak of the averages. Um, also wanted to note this. So uh, Kobisi Letter says the NASDAQ 100 to the Russell 2000 is now 10% above its 2020 peak and 6% above its 2000 peak. So in other words, the NASDAQ has never been more expensive relative to the Russell 2000 um, interesting, uh, that the ratio is currently almost double the historic average. So again, showing that in the traditional markets, you know, uh, those top eight stocks are pretty much driving the entire market. Um, however, um, you know, I, I, I would say this, <clears throat> does run into a bit of sell pressure. Maybe we get a little cool off here down to 15.6. Um, daily volatility is about to start declining. So a mean reversion bounce. I'd be looking for this to come back down, put in a higher low and probably get some continuation. As we said, once we got within 5% of the all time high in a pre-election year, likely that NASDAQ would um, would make a new all-time high. Statistically speaking, within 12 months, you should see a new all-time high. Looks like uh, we could be getting that all-time high sooner than later. As we are, you know, getting a nice buy signal on the weekly with one day left to close. Volatility is just beginning to expand. So we could get a little backfill going into next week. Uh, but overall, I'm looking for an attempt at the top side of the range here coming at 167. Uh, how's the S&P doing? Looks uh, pretty healthy as well. 
fresh buy signals coming in off this low. Um, nice deviation below the bottom side of the range, reclaimed it, and looks like it wants to head back on up there as well. And the Dow Jones is uh, now just... 4.9% away from making new all-time highs. Uh, how's that TLT doing? Bouncing off the lows. We didn't quite get the full move down, uh, but this could be just a retest before continuation to the downside. Um, and what's coming up? December 13th, I think, is the next Fed rate hike meeting. Uh, remember, inflation came in lower than expected and the market rallied this month. So maybe there's a chance that they do not raise rates. I'm gonna check in on the CME rate hike tool. Uh, maybe take a look at uh, some of the economic data coming in. And <clears throat> also noting you know, some interest coming back into the market. You're seeing a lot more YouTubers, a lot more Twitter handles coming back pumping crypto now saying, oh yeah, you know, now you should buy when we, we've been in the trenches and getting into Bitcoin, you know, since about 19,000, 25,000. And now the question becomes, okay, where do we take our profits? Where is Bitcoin likely to put in a bit of a high before the Bitcoin having cycle? And so we'll take a look at that really quick as well. I am going to put my timer on so I don't lag too much here today um, and so again with the bias on uh, stock market up for a bit more that gives us a bias for you know an additional push on Bitcoin again Bitcoin is a bit of a higher beta tech stock and speaking of that I found this um, interesting site that shows all the public companies that own Bitcoin, starting off with micro strategies, 158,000 Bitcoin, Marathon Digital, 13,000, Tesla, 10,000, Hut, 8 Mining, Coinbase, Galaxy, Digital, Block, Riot Platforms, Bitcoin SE, Hive Digital, Clean Spark. So a lot of the uh, mining companies, but I mean, look at the list goes all the way down here three Bitcoin, three Bitcoin for net holdings anonium. I wonder what that is. And then I heard today, uh, well, Japan is listing new tokens. And then the uh, South Korean pension fund, um, the South Korean pension fund just bought a bunch of Bitcoin. And uh, I thought I'd get a better, uh, a better, better tagline for the Bitcoin ETF delayed decision. Um, let's see, SEC delays. Yeah, the decision on hash Dex Bitcoin spot ETF application, grayscale ethers futures filing. So just to give an idea what happened when the gold ETF was approved. And now they're saying the soonest the ETFs will be approved is January 10th. Um, but Essentially, you know, what could happen for Bitcoin, what could happen as pick people uh, kind of front run the decision as people are now mostly saying, yeah, the ETF is going to get approved. It's just a matter of when and not if. Um, I wanted to pick up on that comment on the BLX index. And just overall, in general, this has been our target from the lows down here saying, look, you know, in a bull market, uh, bull traps and bear traps do come up to the 0.5 and the 6.18. First target being at that, call it 40,000. Second target, call it 46, uh, 48,000, depending on if you're going by the wicks or if you're going by the candle bodies. Um, I say candle bodies is going to be a little bit more conservative for your first target and typically going into the halving cycle, you get a little bit of a rally. This was a one-off, but uh, market certainly pulled back here to the tune of 60%. That was the coronavirus dump. Um, this 
rally going into the halving 2016 and uh, from the high to the low that was a 35 percent dump whoops i want to put that back where it was let's see was it june yeah june that was 12 months prior to the and that's when the bull market typically starts is 12 months prior to the bitcoin having you can see this rally and then you get a bit of a minor take profits um, from the rally right so again that drop here 50 percent so not bad so we are looking for that 30 50 percent correction coming in from bitcoin at some point uh, the question is when where does the crystal ball tell us when and what's going to give us the big um, warning sign and i i would say that in general uh if we hit the 0.5 or the 618 and uh, get a strong rejection or even a little bit of a deviation above then play out a 30 percent correction so where does that kind of take us in the grand scheme of things and I do believe that um, here are the range levels. And I believe those are some good levels right there. And they're not exactly 100% even, but uh, if you can see, if Bitcoin does rally up to the 0.5 and the 6.18, completing that bull trap or bear trap, whatever you want to call it, if it starts to come down and loses that 0.5, that's going to be your first warning sign. Assuming Bitcoin's price does get up here over the next few weeks, I think the rally is getting a bit extended here. And so maybe one more push. Um, and I'll go over some ideas for as to why in just a moment. But the reason I wanted to bring this up is if you measure down 30%, 35% would take you down to 30,000 bucks and 40%, 46% all the way down to 25,000. I do believe that's probably the downside risk. Uh, depending upon the move that we do get. Now, is this going to line up with a Fed rate hike decision? It looks like 99% chance of no rate hike. So apparently they know if they raise rates anymore, it is going to break the ent entire system. Um, so is it too late to get involved with Bitcoin? If you didn't already get long from Bitcoin at uh, 25 or even 30,000 bucks, Probably don't want to chase this one at this point. So the next question is, where do the honeybees go? And the honeybees uh, definitely went to Solana. You can see Solana is going to be coming into the... Solana could have more to go, guys. Uh, if we're not even up to the um, the 382, I, I'm going to suggest that perhaps... Uh, Solana has a little bit more to go as the 0.5, even on from this high to this low, does suggest that uh, Solana has a little bit more to go. And then we talked about, okay, uh, layer one's getting popular, you know, a rush into Ethereum, a rush into Solana, and then AVAX was the next one on our list, up 13% today. I think it had a 20% rally yesterday. And this one is looking like she wants to go for more um, and hitting the first target. Let's see if I can draw this one out. So if you were feeling a bit late on some of the, oh, look at that coming in perfectly for that daily trend line test. So are we going to get a little bit of sell pressure coming off of this? I wish I had a longer chart looking back on AVAX. Uh, this one, I don't believe is helping me out either. Oh, it is. Okay. 
So I would not be surprised uh, looking at that trend line if we did see a little bit of sell pressure. But if you look at some of the other coins, um, I think Solana just busted right through. We want to look at this on a weekly time frame as well. And this is the, the signal you want to see is the deviation below the range. A W completion tags the green 55 gets a pullback and then resets. And the reason I'm going over this with you, there's a couple of other setups that are looking uh, very similar to this. So daily downtrend or weekly downtrend deviates below breaks above the uh, the major trend line gets a retest and just rockets off to the moon rockets off to the moon and where does this one go so it has rallied off the lows currently up 120 percent wow no top to bottom 180 percent um let's just compare that to solana which i don't know if you can compare that to solana as it is a bit of a different uh coin here and off the weekly low bit of a sloppy w but breaks the weekly downtrend doesn't even retest just off to the moon so from the low to the high here 300 percent gainer so maybe avax has another 100 percent left in its tank and then we talked about this one benicky uh something to keep an eye on very similar shape Deviation below the range and uh, looks like it is going to mount an assault all the way up to the green 55. And that is the same thing that I'd be looking at for um, this one here, curve. Curve uh, looking, looking good, looking good for a bit of a retest. I do like this one, uh, giving you another chance to uh, get involved before perhaps a uh, magnificent writ to the upside. And then, so curve is one. And then the other one I wanted to bring to our attention today, optimism, uh, I do believe is amidst a bit of a breakout and a W formation and a target up here at about 217, gonna be, Benefiting from just the all-around uh, interest in Ethereum, CRV, Optimism, Rune, again, just stealing away the show here on the daily, up another 7%. This thing just doesn't want to stop. It's got no breaks, and um, this is probably the strongest altcoin in the entire marketplace right now up 324% off of the lows and heading back, heading back to the all time highs. Um, and you will notice that uh, coming right into the trend line. So yeah, that one probably has a little bit more to go as well. And the big question is, are we gonna bust through the trend line? A little bit late to the party on this one to be fair. Um, chain link, maybe finally putting in a bit of a corrective move. If we do take out this level, um, very similarly to a Bitcoin, I would say, you know, uh, put the brakes on or exercise with caution. Dot, dot was the one CRV and dot. I'm just going to move those to the bottom of my list. CRV and polka dot, Mr. Polka dot. You might say, what, what does dot do? Huge ecosystem for Ethereum. And as long as Ethereum holds up nicely, I do think this one has some more potential on the weekly time frame. You can see it has not even hit the green 55 yet most coins have smashed through the green 55 so again very similar de deviation below the range low and uh 
really uh, below the all time low and just just beginning to lift off. This one is up from the low. 63%. So if you want something that has a potential for more also has more downside risk. Um, again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but these are the coins that I'm looking at. I hope you guys enjoyed the show today. If you did, make sure you smash the like button and share it with a friend. I will be back tomorrow with another one, giving you some more updates on these crypto markets. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored day. Take care.